you're going to be intrigued by the concept of hiring a virtual assistant to help perform with daily tasks. Our guest today, Scott Ramage, is going to tell us exactly how easy it is coming up on the next Fitness Business Podcast episode. If this is your first time to the show, hey, welcome to the family. Make sure you go to fitnessbusinesspodcast.com and you can listen to our entire catalog of shows. There are so many to choose from. If you're a regular listener, thank you. We appreciate you coming back for another educational episode. And finally, if you get value from any of our episodes, we are grateful in advance of you posting a review on iTunes. Hey, everybody out there. This is your host, Dory Nugent. And today, our guest, Scott Ramage, will tell you how your life and job could be easier with a virtual assistant. Scott is the co owner of VAs for Gyms, and he is here today to convince you that outsourcing some of the mundane daily tasks to a virtual assistant will make you more productive and improve your profits. We will hear from Scott Ramage in less than two minutes. First, a huge thank you to One Fit Stop for supporting our show. One Fit Stop is modern fitness studio software built for the growing multi-location studio, providing scheduling, client management, programming, payment collection tools, and more that will set your business up to grow, grow, grow. To find out more, go to onefitstop.com or click on the link in today's show notes. Thank you, One Fit Stop, and you can check them out at www.onefitstop.com. Get your pen ready now for Keep Me's Fit Bizpiration. What are your top three actions we need to do to outsource in our business? So number one, you definitely need to evaluate the potential and the need. So make a list of things that are being done now that are repetitive that don't have to be done by you or a staff member and maybe not the best use of their time. So that's definitely number one. Just understand where and what and how someone would fit. Number two would be to develop a hiring plan. Like find out, do some research, search, find out where you can find virtual assistants. I would highly suggest not using a hiring firm. Uh, you're going to pay quadruple. And I know that sounds weird from a guy in the industry, but what we offer is so unique. It's, 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 it's not the same. So make a plan on how you're going to hire them. Do a little research and, and develop that, your steps for interviewing and hire. And then number three is uh, give them, give time for process. You're going to have to learn how to communicate. You're going to have to learn how to pass projects and uh, tasks on, and then how to continue that and how to make sure things are getting done on, on time and in the fashion you want. And that's not going to happen overnight unless you're just a natural project manager. So you're going to have to learn some project management systems or tools. It can be super simple, like a Trello board, which is free, but definitely make sure that you give yourself time for that transition and your new hire time for that transition. After this week's full interview, I will introduce you to next week's guest, Carl Smith from Concepts Fitness Consultancy, and you're going to hear why you need to come back next week to hear his interview. I promise it's going to be really good. MyZone has pioneered unique wearables with talking point technology that makes the difference. Reach more members of your community and keep them engaged for longer through motivation and gamification wherever they choose to work out. In the gym, at home, or outdoors, we're stronger together. Get in the zone at myzone.org. Let's transition into this week's interview with Scott Ramage. Scott Ramage is here. He is the co-owner of VAs for Gym and Scott. Scott, you're going to talk to us about virtual assistants and also about outsourcing to help make life easier for gym owners, department heads, studio boutique owners as well. So welcome to the Fitness Business Podcast. Thank you, Dory. It's an honor to be here. 
Yeah, absolutely. Great to have you here. I'm excited about your topic. But before we really kind of get into the meat of the interview, I'd like for you just to talk a little bit about the virtual assistant. Like what, are, what, are, what is VAs for gyms? So VAs for gyms is uh, basically a solution for gym owners, managers, like you said. We offer virtual assistance for uh, small businesses, actually of all kinds, but we really focus in on gym, the gym business. And it was basically born out of our own need to get more done in, in less time and, and really just leverage the productivity hack of having a virtual assistant. Yeah, who doesn't want a virtual assistant? I'd like to have one of those myself. <laughs> right. but, um, totally understand where you're coming from. I've been in that position before, as many of our listeners have, where you're just literally, I, I, sometimes I used to pride myself on wearing a variety of hats, but at the end of the day, is it really profitable for you at, at your club? Right, right. And, and I have to say, I've owned a gym, I've owned many businesses. And when you build a gym or you build a business or you come into a role and you are priding yourself on doing everything, you get in this trap of, of thinking that nobody can do it as well as you, or you have to have someone sitting right beside you and micromanaging them. But all that is doing is limiting your growth. It's limiting your own potential. And so I'm very passionate about this because this is what opened up my entire world of stepping up to the next level in business ownership. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about this outsourcing and, and getting the virtual assistant. Should we consider this person a part of our team? It's like, for example, do we bring them into our culture? Do we onboard them? Please explain how that works. It's difficult. <laughs> That's why I'm so passionate about this. And it, it, it's been quite a, quite a journey. But when you, when you get a virtual assistant, you're buying a um, somebody's time who has specific talents or or skills, and you should treat them exactly like a, a staff member. They should understand the culture of your business. Uh, we're very clear with our team what our our values, our core values are, our mission, everything. They know exactly what anybody in house would know, and so um, they just don't come into the office. It's the only difference because they're. I actually don't like the term virtual assistant because for me, what I found is they are so much more talented than that. They are virtual professionals. And so you absolutely should continue, should treat them like they are one of your own. And, and we offer a little different model. So I'm going to speak to both sides of that where, you know, if you're hiring just one, absolutely, hands down, treat them like they're they're there with you every single day. What kind of skills would a gym owner hire for? So that's the that's the real challenge. Is I was talking to a lot of gym owners. Like I've I've hired the virtual assistants, and they they either disappear or they can only do reports, or they're really good at one thing and they can't do another. So it's a really big issue because really what people are looking for is a unicorn. They're looking for someone who can pull reports. Basically, what I say is you should have. People, if you have a virtual assistant team, which is we offer an entire team, we don't offer our clients one person. We offer them a team of that has a massive variety of skills from high level video editing to, you know, the, the admin stuff. It's, it goes social media experts, content creation experts, uh, video editing experts, the entire, the entire gamut. But um, you really sh need to hire for skill and that and if you're trying to get a jack of all trades, it's, it is like finding a unicorn. So really the mindset shouldn't be one virtual assistant unless you're just looking for an actual assistant who's managing your calendar, replying to emails, uh, those uh, booking flights for you, those types of things. That's what a lot of people think about. Step into that professional zone and think, okay, we're, we need to create a lot of content. What do I need for that? Well, I need somebody who's aware of current trends, understands social media and knows how to create that content. And so um, you just really have to niche down and not expect them to be a master of everything. That's the biggest issue that people have with uh, virtual assistants. So I, when we first talked about this topic and you coming on the show, my mind automatically went to virtual professional. Oh, that's social media. You'd outsource yeah. your social media. So I'm really intrigued that you're talking about, hey, somebody's running reports for you or they're just doing dirty work within within the gym as far as uh, behind the scenes work. So I'm intrigued by that. Yeah, I mean, think of it this way. If you have somebody in-house, no matter how big your gym is, whether it's a one-person studio or, or a, a large chain, 
the people in your location foot on the ground, what is their best, best asset? Their best asset is that face-to-face -face factor. They should be interacting with customers. The more, more customer interaction, member interaction you can have, the higher your retention, the more that personal connection. So if you can remove that from the people on site and give them the freedom to do what really pays for them to be in site, then you're, you're actually leveraging your current staff better um, and you're actually leveraging your overseas or off-site staff better where they're not distracted by the things going on in place. So, yeah, I mean, like, let me, let me just tell you how we do this. So we have a team, a lot of virtual assistants. So when a client comes in, they have access to all of them with a project manager. So they're communicating with one but they have someone that can manage their, their calendar. They have someone, like we have what we call um, plug and play SOPs. Someone comes in, we have, a, we have 20 plus SOPs, actually I heard today it's up to 110, where you can literally say, I need X done. And you look through our menu and we can start that immediate. We've already created an SOP. So even like updating your My Google business page, like consistently, you know how important that is for SEO, like, boom, we got it. We'll start right out of the gates. So we get a little information from you and we're off and running and we're doing it every single week. So running those nasty reports, you have to know what's going on in your business. And I mean, we even have professionals who are, are incredible spreadsheet creators and we take, we give them a spreadsheet and say, Hey, this, this is what I created. And they come back with this like masterpiece and, and just really fine tuning your business. So there's so many variety of tasks that can be done uh, with the right people in play. Yeah. As you're talking about this and I'm learning more about it, all I envision is the poor GM that is always stuck in their office. You know, they don't want to be, but because yeah, they're, they're pulling data, they're pulling reports, they're looking at numbers. So I, I get this. I'm, I'm just like, oh my goodness, I would certainly give the GMs a chance to get out and walk around and talk to the members. And like you said, it, it all helps with retention. There's a, there's a restaurant I go to and my wife and I go there for dates and the manager is always walking from table to table, asking everybody what they like, what they don't like, taking care of something's wrong. We go back there religiously because we're taken care of. He, he takes the moment. What is more important for your manager to be back scrubbing numbers or for him to have him or her to have a, a, every day a report comes in, they can see it. They know what's going on. It's like their own personal dashboard, whatever they want. And then they can spend time on the floor talking to the, to the members, looking at the classes, interacting with the trainers and the coaches and really getting a footprint on or, or read on everything that's going on and really new, moving the needle in the business. So this episode is going to come out just in time for all of the gym owners out there that are doing their budgets for 2022. <laughs> right. They need to make sure that they're putting an allotment for a virtual assistant or a virtual professional for 2022. I, I just see the whole uh, role of the GM changing in a positive way. Absolutely. Very nice. So let's talk about advantages of outsourcing some of this work and the pitfalls or the disadvantages of outsourcing some of this work. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Uh, I'm going to start with the advantages, obviously just really leveraging time. You're, you're leveraging time. And I'm going to be honest, money. It, when you, there's a reason we outsource. I re, we outsource to, uh, we have about four different countries we outsource from for different skills, different time zones. But let's take the Philippines, for example, super hardworking culture very hardworking culture. Uh, they are not entrepreneurial in, in general. They're not entrepreneurial, which is beautiful because they're not going to steal information. And they are very conscious. They want to be professionals at everything they do. Not to mention the government has seen how amazing of an opportunity this, this is for their people. And so when, when someone is interested in doing virtual work, their government has massive training for them. So you can literally find somebody who's been trained in Facebook marketing and pick them up. And so the advantages are, are limitless. Like really seriously, we kind of hold on to things that we want to do because, and this is me uh, as a business builder this is kind of what I do. I build everything from the, the, from the ground up and I want to continue doing everything. But what I realize as soon as I learn to offload that onto someone else explain to them my expectations and being willing to tweak it with them as we go along. Like that's not quite what I want that communication. 
the product end product where they come up with is 10 times better than I could have done on my own and a hundred times less time. So the advantages are endless and um, money. <laughs> like I don't tell anybody who asks me, what do I do if I'm going to hire my own VA? Obviously we say hire us because we have an entire team at the ready for you. But if you're going to hire your own, pay them a salary right out of the gates, pay them, pay them for full-time, whether you're going to use them full-time or not, because then they're going to be loyal. What, what happens a lot of times, and this is a, a, a disadvantage, is that they will take on 10, 11, 12 different clients because none of them are giving consistent work. When I first hired my very first VA, I said, I'm going to pay you for 40 hours a week. It's my fault if you're only working five. That means I only gave you five hours a week. And she's still with me today. She leads my team. She's absolutely incredible. She actually is a unicorn. She can do so many things. But that is one tip that no matter coming out of this, hire them full time. And I'm telling you, when I hire someone full time, I found out what they're doing as a stimulus for nurses in the Philippines right now. What they're paying them, our average pay is four times higher than that. And what those nurses are making are big box over there. And we're paying four times that we're basically making families rich in the Philippines, which is a phenomenal feeling. So you can have a massive impact on a whole family. So hire someone full-time if you're going to do it, don't treat it like a, like Fiverr, where you're just going to hire them for little things. Cause you're going to not get someone who's a part of your team. You definitely want someone who's a part of your team. So the downside of hiring a VA is they aren't on site. And if you are a micromanager or you like to do everything yourself, you have a ton to learn. You have a ton to go through. It also takes a lot of work to develop a system. Developing a system of communication, getting the work done, um, manipulating the work, tweaking it, getting someone to a place, and then having some sort of calendar and sync so you know what they're doing. You have a place to check always. So there's a project management side that not everybody is good at because you're used to just t- walking up to somebody and saying this, where you have someone um, remote, you have to learn a lot of new skills. And that's another thing that we take away is we, we have that all in place and we teach our clients, but you ha- there can be a, some massive miscommunications that happen. Also, there's, there can be a high level of frustration. You assign something and it comes back different than you were thinking And a lot of times that just comes down to communication. You may not understand the best way to communicate or you let that frustration get in the way and you don't communicate, which is the worst thing you can do. It always turns into that, well, I could do this faster and better myself, which is never the truth, but it's a lie we tell ourselves to maintain control. So those are some of the biggest downsides. The other downsides are, like I mentioned, with just having one virtual assistant is they're going to take vacation. They're going to get sick. They're going to have family members get sick, just like a staff. And then they can... and Really, if you really leverage your virtual professional, you're going to have them doing so many recurring tasks. Every Monday, they're going to be pulling this report. Every Tuesday, they're going to be checking your emails and and responding to cancellations. Every Thursday, they're going to go into your your gym management system and and look for people who've hit new benchmarks and how often they visited you so that you can send out a social media post or a big high five for them. And then they're gone. It's just like, you know, if someone calls in sick, it can be very stressful. And then they can get another job offer and just disappear. <laughs> so that's one of the biggest ones. It's one that I found talking to a lot of business owners tried this have ran into is people disappear. So having a really, really high level of communication, uh, very open communication is absolutely key into keeping and uh, having a long-term relationship with those rock star virtual assistants that are out there. Yeah. So let me just ask you this as far as, A lot of our listeners out there might be saying, well, I have an assistant, you know, uh, and the assistant can do all of this. Why would you outsource rather than just hire an assistant that's in the building, following you around, kind of knows the culture? If you have a killer assistant in-house and it's meeting your budget, then then by all means, use them. I've been telling you that they're like, I'm, I'm now I'm speaking to our service where we have this huge variety of people. It's, you can't beat that. You, you won't you won't find somebody who is a a player in the video editing world and an A player on social media who knows how to go in and optimize everything and check the the analytics and the schedules and also knows how to increase SEO and write blog posts put on the back end of your website or whatever the case may be. 
those people are really, really good for the personal side. I still have my own personal assistant. It's virtual, but they really get to know you. It's really hard to replace, but it can be done overseas. So I, I guess my, my answer to that is it's a lot cheaper to hire someone overseas. That's okay. That's yeah. an honest answer. It's that's a lot more budget friendly. That's what the listeners want to hear. Yes. Yeah. It's budget friendly. Yes. Perfect. So let's talk a little bit about you decide to hire a VA, right? So our listeners are out there and they're like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to try this. I'm going to hire a virtual assistant or virtual professional. What is the timeline? What's a realistic timeline for the team members of your of the virtual assistants to be able to get into a rhythm that you know it's running smoothly? They know what you want. What can we realistically expect? Massively varies based on your ability to communicate and manage projects afar. So, first of all, hiring somebody cannot be an overnight procedure. It is a like I have a I have a guide on how to do this, and I I teach a we, I have a webinar on how to do this, how to hire a rock star VA, and it it is like literally you can just go ahead and say okay I'm going to put 20 hours aside because there's so many little you you really need to test the person out before you before you hire them, and there's a lot of tricks and tips um, that I give people on doing that, like asking the same question four times and five different emails so that you look for consistency and understanding of the English language, all those really important things. But once you hire somebody, it's going to take you a month to get the synergy in place. It's going to take you a couple of weeks at least to figure out how the best way to communicate is. Um, it's going to take them a while to understand your branding, your, your, what you're asking for. But what I say is just take one task at a time and learn as you go, hire them. Like I said, Offer to pay full time. Say, I don't want you working for anybody else. This is what I do. I will hire you. Here's your contract. I prefer you not working for anybody else. I know I'm only going to give you like, it could be two hours in the first week because I've got to learn with you. And then just do step by step and and move that needle one task at a time until you get in a flow. And then all of a sudden, you'll just be dropping things to them like crazy. So it's probably a month. Yeah. And, you know, sitting here thinking like that can happen with somebody that's in person as well. That if you have an assistant, it takes time to know what, uh, you know, the boss is looking for or the GM is looking for, whether you're in the building or not in the building. So it really is not that different. I'm going to play devil's advocate here for a second and maybe try to ask a question that one of our listeners is thinking out there, but how can you get the authentic content help from someone who really doesn't know the business? Yeah, this is a very common question. It's a really good question. The very first thing we do for any of our team is assign them. We actually pay them to learn our client. So a new client comes in, I assign them, create a business profile, get understand their colors, their branding, look at all of their social media, watch all their videos they might have online, understand the brand inside and out, and then also include them in staff meetings and trainings. Okay. And what are some of the critical best practices when working with an outsourced team member? Number one, communicate daily. Just like if someone were walking into your office, you would say, hi, how are things going? Maybe have a really short little interaction. You have to communicate very frequently. Number two, I said this already, treat them like a team member and clearly, clearly explain expectations and ask questions to make sure there's understanding. And then three, like I said before, is is include them in staff meetings and trainings. Treat them like you said earlier, treat them like they are on site, treat them like they're staff, help them understand your culture, your core values, all those important things to operating a successful business. Scott, I really appreciate you coming on to the show. You've brought a completely new topic to the podcast and one that I think our listeners are really going to value. Thank you very much, Dory. It's been awesome. I'm very passionate about it. Yeah, you sound like you're passionate about it. And that's what we love. We want our industry experts to be passionate about their topic. Tell me a little bit about VAs for Jim. Like, when did you get this started? You know, it's quite crazy. It was developed during the pandemic. (laughs) So uh, I I needed help. Uh, doing all the things that I wanted to do, podcast editing, podcast production, social media, all that stuff. So it it started by uh, me nailing down a system for my own VAs. And then gym owners actually, because I was running some gym masterminds, 
asking me, I want to use your VAs. I've failed at it over and over again. I want to use your team. I want to use your team. And me saying, no, no, no. And then it grew from there when I once finally said yes. And people have got massive success very fast. So we are only seven months old. That's okay. I can't tell you how many guests that I have had come on to the podcast that have developed things during the pandemic. And I say this all the time, as terrible of a time that it was when everybody in the world was in lockdown, there's so many wonderful things that actually did come out of the pandemic. A lot of books, you know, a lot of new businesses, uh, vir- you know, virtual assistants, virtual trainers, virtual group X. So it, I really appreciate that you took the time to put that together. I think our listeners will definitely want to reach out and contact you to learn more. Thank you very much. I think, if, like I said earlier, during a pandemic, it's don't stop. During a downtime, don't stop. Look at what problems need to be solved. And that's really, you know, what we did is like, what problems need to be solved? And it was very clear. There's too, too many people have too much on their plate. some good stuff. You know, I was really looking forward to Scott's interview. So I just want to say thank you for taking the time, hey, Scott, out of your day to come on to the Fitness Business Podcast to educate all of us about the benefit of a virtual assistant. Now, those of you out there listening, if you have any further questions for Scott, his contact details are on the show notes, which can be seen at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. Or when you subscribe to the show notes, they are emailed directly to you. If you want to subscribe to the show notes, you can go to fitnessbusinesspodcast.com as well. In 30 seconds, I will introduce you to our guest, Carl Smith, who is coming up next. Professional facilitation with a group of non-competing owners to stay ahead of the industry curve is the USP of Rex Roundtables. To find your local roundtable, go to rexroundtables.com. That's rexroundtables.com. Quickfire 5. It is now my honor to welcome Carl Smith from Concept Fitness Consultancy to the podcast. Let's find out more about Carl and why our FBP family needs to tune in next week to listen. Carl Smith is our Quick Fire Five guest today. Carl is the owner and business coach behind Concept Fitness Consultancy. Carl, are you ready for your five questions so that our FBP family out there can get to know you for next week's episode? Um, I think so. All right, here we go. Question number one, what was a life lesson you learned from the pandemic? I've got four, if that's okay. Um, I think first it was, it was those who adapt the fastest, thrive the quickest. Um, uh, do what you enjoy um, time with your family is priceless and um, uh, you don't need a bench uh, to, to train chest <laughs> I really like that last one <laughs> <laughs> all right I can see the humor coming out already I like it <laughs> okay number two here we go if you could play a character in any movie what character would it be as a kid of the 70s, um, I, I grew up in, in Zambia, in, in Africa, and by the age of 10, I think I'd seen only three films um, or, or movies. One of them was Superman, one of them was, was Spider-Man, and the other one was Superman 2. And, and Spidey's hood looked a little bit too hot for me, so I'm going to go with Superman. All right, Superman it is, cape and all, I like it. All right, complete this sentence for me, please. Sunday morning, you can find me... Well, 15 years ago, Sunday morning was Saturday night, but now you can find me on the spin bike. Oh, how I've changed. (laughs) I'm just going to leave that there. (laughs) Here we go. What is a book that you could recommend to all of our listeners out there? Look, I'm not a a massive reader, and I'm going to put it out there straight away. Um, I think Arnold's Encyclopedia was probably the the only book that I can claim to have read from from the beginning to the end. But but I suppose what is really pertinent, I think, was a a book written in in 1998, which is Who Moved My Cheese, which I think is really for right now, makes a lot of sense for people. Uh, And it's uh, it's, it's short, uh, and it's got pictures, um, and I managed to also complete that one, so... All right. We love a book with pictures. (laughs) 
And finally, here is your chance to pitch to our FPP family on why they should come back next week for your episode. You know, I, I, you know what? I, I'm, I'm really quite excited that the um, that the, the PT landscape is, is changing, and um, I think we've got a, a real opportunity to to jump on board with a lot of the the changes that I guess have almost been sort of forced upon us. But look, we're going to talk about how uh, to make your PT business stand out. We're going to talk about how to differentiate yourself, and look, having a whole bunch of ideas that I want to share that um, effectively will help you get more clients. Hey, everybody! You heard it straight from Carl Smith. He's going to come back next week. He's going to be our industry expert, and he's going to talk about how to differentiate your personal training business from others. Are you a personal trainer that is looking to up your game and differentiate yourself from everyone else? Then you need to tune in next week as Carl Smith is our guest and he gives a multitude of tips and advice on how to separate yourself on the gym floor. So make sure you subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast player or even better, let us do the work for you and we'll send you the show. Subscribe at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. Now, I'm not sure what all you guys are thinking out there, but I can tell you what, as soon as I am done with this episode, I am signing up for a virtual assistant. Personally, I would love for someone to manage my emails for me, but hey, listen, don't tell JT that it's not me responding personally to his emails, okay? Deal? <laughs> All right, hey, I'd like to give a thank you and a shout out to our founding partner, Active Management. Our partners, Keep Me, My Zone, Discover Strength, Tribe Team Training, One Fit Stop, and our advertisers, Rex Roundtables, MX Metrics, and Vapor Fresh. We believe what you leave behind is not what is engraved in stone monuments, but woven into the lives of others. Yeah.